This is the video lecture for physics, general physics 2. This is the video lecture that you should have done on Friday, the 3rd of April. I'm so sorry I'm late on this. I'm going to finish up chapter 24 today, and I will also give you homework for chapter 24, and that homework will be due on uh, Monday, the 13th of April, and uh, this Wednesday we'll have a review session so you can finish your homework. Um, next Wednesday, uh, that's the 15th of April, you will have exam three. I'm so sorry that that falls within dead week, but um, I want to get this exam done as soon as possible so we can review for the final exam on Friday. Uh, the next exam will cover chapter 22, 23, and 24. Okay, so we've been talking about magnetic fields and the relationship with electrical currents. And it turns out that when you have two current loops, if the current is going in the same direction up here, then we have I1 and I2 going in the same direction, then the loops will create magnetic fields that will cause the loops to attract to each other. So there will be attractive force. If you have currents going in the opposite direction, I1 is going up, I2 is going down, then in the current loops, they will repel each other. Okay, so they almost act like magnets. In fact, they do act like magnets where north and south poles are orienting based on the direction of the current. Okay, so if we look at a current and the current, then we use the right hand rule. We lap our, we, we, our thumb is the current. And then our fingers wrapping around are the, uh, is the magnetic field. Then it heads from south to north. South is on the left and north is on the right. So that creates what's called a dipole field. And the dipole is just the two poles of the magnet. So the north pole is uh, where the, field lines exit, the south pole is where the field lines enter. Okay, and so if we have a current loop and the current is going in the same direction, then the north pole is oriented with the south pole. This is over here. Okay, and the south pole is oriented with the north pole. If we have a current loop and it's going in different directions, then you can use the right hand rule to see that the north pole is here for this loop and the North Pole is here. So there will be a repulsive force just because you've got two similar poles. So what happens is when you have an external magnetic field, okay, so you have a magnetic field that is um, here that is uh, being created by two magnets on a, either side of this current loop. And we have a square current loop the current is going around and around and around in a counterclockwise direction. If we have an external magnetic field, then the force at the top of the, of the current loop is going to be equal to the force of the bottom of the current loop. They're equal magnitude in opposite directions, but uh, they so they create no net force. Okay, there's a force in the front and a force in the back. Uh, these forces in the front and the back cancel each other out, and there's no net torque. But if you look at the top and the bottom, then there is an angle here that's associated with the force with the top and the bottom, and so that's going to create a net torque. Okay, so if we look at this current loop. Then you're going to have a net. You're going to have a torque that is uh, this force times one half L sine theta. Okay, this is one half L, and then we just take sine of theta, and then you have a torque down here that is also one half L sine theta. And the torque is the torques are going in the same, basically the same direction. They're rotating clockwise. Okay, this torque up here will rotate the loop clockwise this way. This torque down here will rotate the loop clockwise that way. Okay, so when you have this angle here, then that angle, as long as you're 
um, your angle is greater than zero theta, then you will have a net torque on that current loop. Okay, and the, the equation for the torque, torque is given in Newton meters, is equal to the current that's going through the loop times the cross-sectional area of the loop. So if it's a circular loop, you would just use pi r squared. If it's a square loop, you just use the square of the dimensions on the side. That's multiplied by the magnetic field times sine theta, okay? So if I have an externally created magnetic field here, and I have a current loop and it's facing up, then at this point, the axis of the loop is 90 degrees offset from the direction of the magnetic field. So sine theta would equal to one, okay? So you would start to see rotation here in the clockwise direction because your torque would be maximum. Now, if theta, as theta becomes less and less and less, then the torque will decrease, okay? And then when theta becomes zero, then the torque is zero once the dipole is lined up. Okay. And typically what happens is that you'll have some momentum and it will overshoot this point and it will continue to spin, but um, that gets into the realm of electric motors, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a couple of slides. Okay, so let's consider an example. I'm going to attempt to do an example at home here with my document camera, so please have mercy on me. So let's say we have a square current loop and it's five centimeters on each side, and it carries a current of 500 milliamps, or a half an amp, and the loop is on a 1.2 Tesla magnetic field, and the axis of the loop is perpendicular to the plane of the loop, but it's 30 degrees away from the field direction. So we wanna find the magnitude of the torque in the current loop. Okay, so let's switch over to the document camera. See if that will work. Oh, that's my phone. Yay. Okay. So we have a current loop. Get that in focus. Same, so theta is equal to 30 degrees. Let's get that lined up a little bit better. Okay, my arrow is really sucking it today. But you see what I've got at home. Okay, so where am I going to draw my current loop? around this, this is a square loop, okay, and that's going to be in the current loop, okay, okay, so that is my current loop, it is five centimeters on each side, so it looks like a rectangle, but we're just going to assume that it's a square, five centimeters on a side, my net negative field is 1.2, and then my current Okay, so I have everything that I need. So I know that the torque is going to equal to I K times D sine theta. Okay, so my sine is 0.5 amps. My area is five centimeters on a side squared. because it's a square loop, and then my net negative field is point sine eight Okay, so go ahead and put, plug that into our calculators.
Okay. Point oh 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 seven five for seven point five times ten to the negative four newton meter. Okay, I'm not going to go through the dimensional analysis. It's really complicated, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're in amps, not milliamps. You're in meters, not centimeters. You're in Tesla. You're not in nano Tesla or micro Tesla. That everything is in your normal SI units and then your outcome is in Newton meters. Okay. Okay, so this is the principle behind an electric motor. With an electric motor, you want something that moves, that can spin, that can spin a shaft to create some type of power through torque. Okay, so we have a north magnet and we have a south magnet. And that creates electric field lines. Or magnetic field lines here. And that if you have a current loop that is going through here, then that will create a net torque. That net torque will cause this to spin. Now you have current in a loop here that depending on the direction of, or depending on where you are within the rotation, the current will either go clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, so at every half cycle, the, the this what's called a uh, commutator will invert the current. So instead of going counterclockwise in this direction, it will go clockwise instead. Okay, so at every half turn, then you get some you get force that will support the rotation. Okay, when it gets um, if the current was only going in one direction. When it got 90 degrees or perpendicular to the uh, um, to the field, then the loop would stop. But because this current through this commutator will change direction, then it will force it over the top. And on one side of the loop, it will create a rotation to go counter to go clockwise. And then the opposite side of the loop, it will also create a rotation to go clockwise because your current is alternating. Okay. Another type of imaging uh, piece of equipment is magnetic resonance imaging. And this uses a very powerful magnet and it allows um, some of the atoms in the body, a lot of, you know, when, when you have an MRI machine to magnetize, okay? And by magnetizing these images of the body, then that will um, cause alignment to magnetization um, and then you'll get an image, okay? So each nucleus pre creates a rotating magnetic field. That magnetic field is detectable by the scanner. And then that uh, these rotating magnetic fields then can be imaged, something like this. Here's an MRI of the brain. Usually you have some type of contrast agent that you'll um, inject directly into the veins. Um, uh, gadolinium has been used, although there's some safety issues with that. And those particular magnetic molecules then will create small magnetic fields that can be picked up by, um, uh, by imaging equipment. Okay. Now, some materials like iron um, can actually be magnetized by coming into contact with a magnet. 
If you ever tried this with a paper clip, if you take the paper clip and it comes into contact with the magnet, you can actually magnetize the paper clip because it's made out of iron. And these materials are called ferromagnetic. And in these particular materials, the electrons are, you've got unpaired electrons and they have an inherent magnetic moment. Okay. But when they have an odd number of electrons, they'll have at least one electron that's unpaired. And this unpaired electron will create magnetism. And each atom then will give, um, it will have a net magnetic moment. Okay, so if we look at something like iron, then if it's not under the influence of a magnet, then all the magnetic moments will be pointing in, in different directions, in a variety of direction. Magnetism will cancel out, so there will be no net magnetic moment. However, if we put it into contact with a magnet, then uh, the magnetic moment will be aligned. Okay, so the sample has north and south poles. South will be attracted to north, and north will be attracted to south. So under the influence of the magnet, then this will align. And the, these atoms have to be, um, have a magnetic moment. It's not just iron, but other materials can magnetize. Uh, and this is due to unpaired electrons that are spinning. These atoms' magnetic moments line up and reinforce each other. And so if I have a piece of iron and it's unmagnetized, then in these separate domains, then you'll have magnetic fields, but they'll cancel each other out. The net effect will be no magnetism. However, if I put a bar magnet down here, then the bar magnet will influence the magnetism and some of these domains will start to line up. So you get a north and south pole. So your net effect is that a portion of your iron will be magnetized just by realigning the atoms. The atoms have a wiggle room. So then the magnetic moment will um, intensify because instead of canceling out the domains, they'll start to point in the proper directions. Okay, so just to summarize this chapter, uh, we know that you can get magnetic fields directly from electricity, and you'll find that electricity and magnetism are in, integrally tied together. And so um, what happens is that when you have an electric field, then perpendicular to that electric field, you'll have a magnetic field, okay? The most basic unit of magnetism is the magnetic dipole, which is a north and a south pole. And this can be created from a permanent magnet can be created from a current loop. And it can also be created from just an atom that's like iron that has an unbalanced spin and we, uh, because of an extra electron, and that will create a small atomic magnet. We know that north and south poles attract. Uh, like poles, north and north and south and south will repel. Okay, current when it's flowing parallel to each other in the same direction causes the wires to attract. Current going in the opposite direction causes the wires to repel. And magnetic fields will attract, exert torques on magnetic dipoles and they will line them up into the field. And if you have two or more sources of magnetic fields and the magnetic fields are additive using met vector math and you can just apply the principle of superposition. Okay. So that concludes this chapter. That was quick. We're able to do it in less than 20 minutes. I'm going to give you some homework right now. So the homework that I'm assigning, this will be due on Monday, the 13th of April. And you want to do problem number three. Problem number six. Okay, I'll give you 10 problems.
Um, let's see, problem number 13. Um, problem number 23, problem number 34, so how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, five problems so far. Problem number 39, that's the sixth problem. Problem number 41. Problem number 45. I'm losing track of the numbers of problems I'm doing. Four, five. Six, seven, eight, two more. Problem number fifty two. And problem number fifty seven. Okay, so well, let me read those again. So problem three, six. 13, wait a minute, okay, 3, 6, 13, 23, 34, 39, 41, 45, 52, and 57, okay, are your homework problems. I'll also post those on the call, so um, you can write those down when I send you a Moodle message. Okay, and that concludes our video lecture. Uh, next, we'll chap start chapter 25. Chapter 25 will be on the final exam. It will not be on this next um, uh, hour-long exam coming up. Uh, so don't fret about that. The next exam will include chapter 22, 23, and 24.